Well, the years start coming and they don't stop coming, Kyle. You remember that? A little smash mouth. Darby cast economics Wednesday. This is a big one. I can feel it. Again, Monday sports missed Kyle. It's about time that you get your claw consumption totally locked up. We talked about this at the beginning of the show, Kyle. And now I got to roust you again. Now I got to roust you. You know what? That's accountability. That is friends helping friends, Kyle, because you're more than a colleague. You're a good dude. But Economics Wednesday. And you know what I'm thinking about? How tough it is to be a student these days. You know, you're taking your online classes and then some random kid named Bobby from God knows where just shows up into your class and He's like, hey, smoke pot and watch porn, everyone. And he puts up some inappropriate imagery. And it's like, where, why? Cut it out. But as if that weren't hard enough, these online classes. And mind you, some people are going back to school. Some kids are going back to school this week, next week, possibly even the week after that. That's going to be a battleground, by the way. Kids just feeding off of their parents' energy. During this whole, you know, it's going to be a big, weird time at schools. Your mom's a libtard. And it's like, oh, geez. All right. Take it easy. Take it easy. Your dad's a racist and your mom's a fucking (laughs) libtard. Oh, what a show that must be. That must be insane. But. Today, I want to talk to you about an interesting profession that I think, who knows, might be kind of cool, but it sounds tough. What's that profession? High school guidance counselor. What does a high school guidance counselor even do? Because I don't think they're the school psychologist who's like helping these kids deal with the crushing pressure of comparing themselves to literally everyone in the entire world. I don't think kids are really supposed to, uh, or anybody for that matter, is supposed to compare themselves to like such a massive group of people. You know, oh, there's some rich kids in Delaware and they're driving their Ferraris. It's like that shouldn't even be on your radar. You should be worried about getting a 50 cent cookie from the lunch lady at your high school and eating it slowly and giving a thumbs up to your crush from across the lunch room and being like, I could buy you a cookie. Kind of a look that says that. That's it. But being a high school guidance counselor. Yeah. What do you even do? You definitely skate to work, right? You're pretty relaxed. You wear cords. I know a lot of people don't wear cords, but if you're a high school guidance counselor, they don't say it in the job posting but it's kind of an unwritten rule of the job where it's like your uniform is cords, corduroys, and a sweater. Even if you're working in Arizona, you have got to be wearing that. Some of you are thinking, wow, that's a tough gig. And I say, well, then you wear one of those hats with the fan on them and maybe a little mister as you're skating to work. If you are a high school guidance counselor, what a raw deal that's got to be to just show up and like the world's pretty complicated right now. So as a high school guidance counselor, what can you really tell kids? I feel for the high school guidance counselors that exist right now. They're like trying to give legitimate career or life advice. Some kid comes in and be like, yeah, I think the dollar's going to crash and there's a whole lot going on and I'm getting bullied cyber bullied and uh, there's just too much happening and my family seems to be very polarized politically and I I don't know why any of it matters and like as the guidance counselor what's your game plan do you just say Esther it's going to be okay you're sharp you did well in your calculus test the other week I have faith in you Esther apply for good colleges Go there, get a degree. I think that's just the speech you give every kid, right? 
Is there really, are the high school guidance counselors giving custom tailored advice? Like how custom fitted is the advice? Like in a situation like the one that I just described with Esther, is the counselor going to say like, Esther, you need to sit down with your family and reconcile your political differences and kind of touch on the things that you have in common. Realize that, you know, life is long. There will be other presidential elections and how you treat each other is going to have lasting effects. And that, that's kind of important, you know, and with the dollar crashing or what you think it might be, Esther, there's not a whole lot of control I have over that, nor do you. So just ride it out. Grow some potatoes, Esther, and some uh, cherry tomatoes. That'll keep if the dollar collapses. You're going to need to know how to farm. Is there a high school guidance counselor in the nation who is giving this kind of info? I don't know. Are they being real with kids? Is some kid named Biff showing up and he's flunking out of health class for whatever reason? And it's like, hey, Biff, I notice you're not really showing up. You're wearing a jean cutoff vest. In terms of your path moving forward, I think you should maybe try a little bit harder. Your friend's not really contributing to your success. Might want to get some new friends and then see what kind of makes you happy. I see you working with your hands, Biff. Do any guidance counselors have that conversation where it's like, listen, college isn't for everybody. You don't have to go to college. In fact, that might be a very stupid investment if you're just going to get some crap degree. Biff, do not take out loans to get a degree in jean jacket studies. That is not going to pay off. Watch Biff just go to ITT tech and get some highly specialized degree in jean jacket tech and then just become a billionaire. What do I know? What do I know? Right? Yeah, exceptionally challenging to be anybody giving anybody advice right now. What do you do? Does anybody have it totally mapped out? Because I've been wondering this. Like, if you're a student right now, you're in high school, you're in college even, what is your game plan? moving forward. Because if I'm in college, I'm like, wait a second, automation is just really ramping up. Job market seems a little rough. Seems as though there is a very tense civic debate or something going on. People seem very pissed at one another. This seems to have happened in a record amount of time. Yeah, I don't know. What do you say to those kids? You say, yeah, good luck. Seems like not a real good thing. You know, I talked to a kid the other day. He's not even a kid. He's like 25. And I was like, hey, bro, like what's, uh, it kind of goes back to me talking with strangers. I was talking with this fella. I say, what are you going to do moving forward? What's, uh, what do you think is going to go down? He's like, well, I worked at PwC. That's PricewaterhouseCooper. One of the big four accounting firms. This kid is sharp. Okay. He's like, yeah but I'm not really wired like an accountant. I was like, you don't seem like it. You're wearing Vans. And he was like, yeah, I know. So he's like, yeah, I'm kind of taking some time off to find myself and hope that the political situation in our country kind of sorts itself out. And so me kind of assuming the role of a guidance counselor, unlicensed and not affiliated with any high school or college, I was like, do you, man. Take the time you need to get where you want to be. And that was just like such hollow advice. But he was like, thanks. That, that sounds great. And like in the back of my mind, I was like, I didn't give you anything meaningful. I didn't give you any direction. I just validated you doing nothing. And I think that's kind of what he wanted. He wanted somebody to co-sign on him taking a couple plays off. And I get that. I get that. I'm sure there are plenty of young people who are not exceptionally motivated to move forward right now. What was it like in the 1970s, I wonder? Not just to be a high school guidance counselor, but what was the general vibe of people? Were people just going around high-fiving each other and flexing their biceps and being like, America, we're good at business. We love each other. I don't know if that ever existed, but that's how I want to believe that we could get back to as a country. Say, all things political aside, we need to. High five strangers 
going back to talking with strangers. But we need to get dialed in and be like, you're an American and you're going to do well. Maybe that's a role that we need to be. Maybe that's what the economy demands, is that we all be those strangely optimistic high school guidance counselors, even if we don't know a whole lot about the person or the state of whatever it is they're interested in. Maybe you just say, go for it. Anything they say and be like, I want to do this. Be like, you should. Maybe that's what we need right now. It's just people being like, go for it. Do it. Whether they're like, I think I need to make a product or a service or whatever, what have you. Or if they're like that one guy that I talked to wearing vans who could have probably had a pretty serious accounting career getting out of college and then working at one of the big four. He could have. He could have had a big career, but then he was just like, everything kind of sucks right now. And I'm like, dude, in a way I can kind of understand where you're coming from. Things might look bleak from where you're sitting. And then casually, I was like, Ruth Bader Ginsburg? And he was like, oh, dude. And I was like, what? That's economics for you. That's me being a high school guidance counselor, taking that vibe out into the world with me and just being like, hey, try your best. And people saying, what do you think I should do with my life? And you just say, you just going to want to go ahead and try your best. But then also peppering in like, you don't do drugs. And like, no, no, no. Use protection if you're going to be sexually active. I think that's something that high school guidance counselors still disco on the ones and twos. They're like, hey, Esther, I know you're going to Stanford and you're real sharp, but if you've been hooking up with anybody, make sure you use a little rub-a-dub-dub. You know what I'm saying, Esther? Good job. Get out of here. Go to Stanford. Go Cardinal. It's still a thing that I just don't know whether it's the Stanford Cardinals or the Stanford Cardinal. Boy, do I feel like a moron today. But that could set me up for being a high school guidance counselor. Maybe I'll just apply. Maybe I'll throw in some applications and that'll just be my part-time gig. I show up to some high school for, I don't know, six hours a week. Get paid way more than I deserve for doing the kind of work that I'm doing. And just have kids come into my office. And then they'll just be like, hey, I'm not sure where I'm going in life. And then I'll just be like, boom, join the club, man. No problems. You're going to be fine. Just keep moving forward a little bit. You know what? Hang out with your friends. Um, play sports. Go outside. And they say, well, how's that going to get me ahead in life? And be like, well, go to trade school. If I don't know the answer to what a kid's going to do, I'm going to say, uh, go to trade school. For a lot of people, that might be a good call. I feel like there's a lot of demand for the trades right now. We have a surplus of liberal arts degrees. We're lacking in people doing the micro dirty jobs. I've mentioned this before. I have. But if I had the high school guidance counselor anointing, if I were knighted high school guidance counselor, corduroys, sweaters, hat with a fan if I'm in a hot state, and then just tell kids like, listen, it's challenging, but do what your heart tells you. That would have to be my operating phrase, wouldn't it? Just do what your heart tells you. How many people in your life have given you real high school guidance counselor level advice? You've poured out a lot of information to them and then they just hit you with, just be yourself. Try your best. Or maybe you did try your best and I'm proud of you. One step at a time. I think you just have to know like six or seven catchphrases to be a high school guidance counselor. And in that interview, you just list them off and you're in. I think most people are capable of this, but I think there is some kind of value in just listening to somebody who's going through a tough time. Because let's be honest, young people, they're struggling right now. They are struggling. So some kid seems like they're having a rough time, whether they're in school or just out of school and just like, what the heck? Maybe you just listen to them and be like, follow your heart. It's your attitude, not your aptitude that determines your altitude. Biff, 
you understand why that's important? And then he just, he takes your skateboard from you and does a kickflip, hands it back to you and says, thanks. That sounds amazing. That sounds incredible. High school guidance counselors. Do most people have the skill set that would allow them to do this? Yes. But are people electing to be a high school guidance counselor? I doubt it. So maybe if you're not, you know, fulfilled in the things that you're doing, maybe you go buy a pair of cords. Maybe you buy a couple sweaters. Maybe you just get out there. And if there are any schools around you hiring, maybe you just start doing it for free. Maybe you just sit outside a subway. And if some young person happens to try to get a sandwich, be like, whoa, you wouldn't be going into subway unless you were entirely depressed. Why don't you have a seat over there? Let's hash it out. What's going on in your life? And most kids or adults, whoever you're talking to, they're probably going to say, no way. Let me just get the $5 foot long and get out of here. And that is going to be a tough objection to overcome. So don't be surprised if that happens often. If Subway's your spot, but think about how strong your resume will be when you can show up at some school and be like, well, I interned as a informal guidance counselor outside of Subway at this strip mall. I changed seven lives in 60 days, seven hours a day. That's going to be a tight resume. We need more people like this. Darby Cast, Economics Wednesday. Consider being a high school guidance counselor if you don't know what's going on in your life, either professionally or just casually. Help people out. If you see a young person who looks like they've got their chin down, turn their chin up. Throw on the cords. Be a hero. Also, Share this with people. Share this episode. Share other episodes. Or don't share it. Maybe you just don't. Maybe you just keep it to yourself. And then people constantly wonder. They're like, why does this person have such great ideas? And you could tell them the truth and be like, well, I listen to Darby Cast. I get a lot of great calls on there. Or you could be a little dishonest and be like, these are my ideas. I think we need more high school guidance counselors. That's my thought. Honestly, I don't even care if you do that because I'm more about getting the vibe out there, getting these ideas perpetuating than I am about taking big credit for things. Because as the Darby Cast doctors know, there have been a lot of key ideas to come out of the Darby Cast. Humongous ideas, massive ideas, business, social, perhaps political. Sure, there have been a lot of Huge misfires, but that is the essence of being an entrepreneur on a podcast is just dishing it and saying, somebody run with this. This is my deal. I'm an inception point. Pretty soon, more and more people are going to realize this and just start coming to the Darby cast to harvest key business ideas. And all I want to say to that is, If you're listening to this right now, jump on ideas quickly. When you hear something that you're like, that's actually a really good call. I should buy cords. Do it because somebody else will. The Darby Cast doctor community is growing at kind of a frightening pace. I'm going to be honest. And I wonder if I should like be more responsible with the things that I say. Kyle, you're shaking your head. You say no. You say keep running it. I think that's a great call. Kyle, I'll give you accountability if you give it right back to me. But yeah, like, share, subscribe. Then I may have a treat for you coming up. I might get a pretty cool interview on the Darby cast. Pretty cool. Exceptionally cool. Ragingly cool. Fiercely cool. Just for you, Darby cast doctors. And don't be surprised if you get a bunch of key business ideas out of it. Don't be surprised. But I'll tell you what, back Friday and in the interim, go up to some high school kids and say something really high school guidance counselor-y as your intro. Like, yo, 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 
what's crack a lacking, gang? I'm here to tell you that everything's going to work out fine if you just try your best. And you have any questions for me that you'd like to ask about your future moving forward? And then a lot of them are going to be like, dude, I'm just trying to get some subway. But maybe there's going to be that rare kid who's like, thank the Lord. Somebody asked me, need a little extra help. And then you just take your hat with a mister or a fan on it. You put it on that guy or gal's head and say, cool off for a second as we figure things out together. And then you're pretty much a credentialed high school guidance counselor. And then you can demand any salary at any high school in the country. At least that's what I think it is. But you know what? That's Darby Cast Economics Wednesday back Friday.